Hello and welcome everyone to the live Be Baby show. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, today we're talking about something super fun. So I'm going to have with me Leslie Everest, okay? So some of you, many of you might already know about Leslie Everest, but she is an amazing doula um, in the area of Montreal. And she has been offering doula services for, my gosh, I want to say 30 years, maybe even more. Um, and she's always looking to add right more value to moms and support them even better and recently she added a credential that is truly amazing i didn't even know about this and um she's going to correct me if i say this wrong but she uh, is now a belly time therapy instructor and so for many of you who have babies uh young ones or who have had babies belly time is this thing that we're supposed to start at around you know three six days of age um and it's supposed to promote in particular, uh, the strength of baby's necks to help them be more safe and secure, especially when they're sleeping, in order for them to be able to raise their necks, you know, and move their, their head side to side and protect them from infant set, the sudden infant death syndrome. But there's a lot more value to uh, belly time that we don't know about. And Leslie's going to be talking about that with us today. But one of the comments that we often receive is, my baby doesn't want to do belly time. He starts screaming and yelling and crying every single time that I put him down to do belly time. So what am I supposed to do, right? And so Leslie is coming on today to tell us a little bit more about the use of belly time, but also what you can actually do when you're in that situation. So let's welcome her in. Hello, Leslie. Hi, Samantha. How are you? I'm good, and you? I am great. Thanks so much for inviting me to chat. I'm so happy to have you here with us. I'm like so curious to find out everything about this new service that's available. <laughs> um, maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about yourself. I mean, you've been in the game for so long, and some people might not know of you quite yet because they're new to motherhood. Absolutely. Um, so I am a doula. I am the founder of Mother with Doula Care here in Montreal and in Ottawa. So I have been a doula, as Samantha said, for 27 years now, and that's a long time. And on my journey of helping parents um, through pregnancy, birth, and early parenting, I've added a lot into my toolbox, kind of like Samantha, who is always kind of looking for new stuff and looking to have an integrative approach to helping parents. I've been doing the same thing. So I'm a former La Leche League leader and a breastfeeding educator, and I'm a body worker. I do all kinds of different body-centered emotional therapies. I've been studying that. That's a big passion of mine to support birth trauma and all kinds of things like that. Um, I am also uh, a, a certified sleep educator. And um, recently, I am a tummy time instructor. <laughs> and, you know, people always ask, well, what's the big deal about tummy time? Why do you need to get educated about something as simple as putting a baby down on their belly? And believe me, there, there are lots of reasons which we will chat about today. So that's me in a nutshell. And I'm a mother of four. So I spent, you know, I've lived experience of this. I spent 17 years of my life pregnant and or breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a big part of it, right? When you're trying to hire somebody to help you with um, concerns that you have with your baby, it's just so nice to work with someone who has been in your shoes before. And so who understands the state of mind that you might find yourself in. Um, and I love that you're always adding to, you know, your knowledge to try and serve more and more because, you know, that's what Be Baby was founded on was that desire to just serve. And so whenever we see a need and that we, we were not fulfilling at the moment, we try and make sure that we fix that and we start fulfilling it. So first and foremost, most people know about belly time in terms of, you know, strengthening the neck and, and protecting babies in their sleep, but there's a lot more to it, right? So can you tell us about the the advantages and, and the need for belly time with young babies? Yes. So it all kind of really started to become illuminated how important babies being on their tummy is in about 1992. Because as you know, that's when the back to sleep campaign came, swept the land, right? That's the year that I had my first baby was in 1992. And a lot of things were happening at that time. So 
it didn't used to be like that. It used to be much more natural for parents to put their babies on their bellies to sleep. So that was satisfying the, the tummy time needs that babies had. They would sleep on their bellies. But of course, you know, medical science has borne out that it is not safe for babies to sleep unattended on their tummies. It really, really does raise the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. So obviously we are needing to put babies on their backs. But because babies are on their backs so much of their lives now, they're often not getting adequate time in what's called ventral surface weight bearing, which is a fancy term for putting pressure on their bellies in order to help them grow and to do all of the stuff that um, tummy time affects. So um, my job is to help parents find the best way for them to do tummy time with their baby because it is so important. Another thing about our culture is that in our modern culture, we live in a very containment oriented society. So we will often see little babies with hats and mitts and all bundled up and often like sitting in car seats in the car for long periods of time or in swings and all of that kind of stuff. And they're not getting enough time to move and to express their reflexes and integrate all of the primal reflexes that they have. So tummy time is about reversing some of the effects, uh, uh, the effects of containment and being on the back all the time. And one of the things pediatricians saw was about a 400% increase in head shape issues with babies once they started being on their backs. So of course they have to be on their backs to sleep. Sure, if they are separate sleeping, but um, you know, we see a lot of babies with plagiocephaly, brachycephaly, which is head shape issues. And for a growing baby, this can pose some issues. So tummy time is the antidote to these problems that we see. Exactly. It's to allow that, you know, during the night they have to be on their backs. Of course, we have no choice at this point. But during the day, however, they don't need to be on their backs and, and contained in, you know, swings and strollers and all these things. I'm a big fan of of letting my babies do tummy time, but also let, letting them just like scoot and, and crawl all over the, the house. You know, yes. <laughs> I, make, I make them a, a huge area and they can just, you know, explore everywhere. And it makes them very mobile very very soon as well and it prevents a lot of issues yes. um, i know that sometimes i recommend belly time when i'm seeing gastrointestinal issues with certain babies obviously we have a ton of exercises that we can do as well uh, but sometimes belly time is really really helpful can you sort of explain to moms why belly time has this link with gastrointestinal health um a lot of it has to do with the vagus nerve so the vagus nerve is like the longest nerve in the body. And when our vagus nerve is undertoned, it can affect a lot of stuff. It affects what's called neuroception. So that's what the way that we kind of, our nervous systems unconsciously take in impulses. Like it takes in information from the world around us and from our inside world. And it decides for us what's safe and what's unsafe. So, you know, if a baby is having gut issues, they're often not feeling very safe. So tummy time helps to tone this vagus nerve and it helps baby move their body in such a way that it can release any tension that is compressing nerves or viscera that can contribute. So it's not necessarily a magic bullet for a baby who truly is having a reflux situation, but it can improve it, mm -hmm. it can reduce it, and it can definitely help babies better with pooping. Like if there's any yeah. constipation or anything like that, or gas, being on your tummy is one of the best positions for this. But the weird thing is, is that babies who do have gastric issues kind of hate tummy time the most. So <laughs> yeah, know, exactly. some of you moms have probably found that. So how do we, how do we deal with a baby who doesn't want to do tummy time, but needs to do tummy exactly. time? Exactly. That's the number one thing. Help. My baby doesn't like to be on their tummy. And my pediatrician says I need to have them in tummy time for up to an hour a day. So pediatricians are, are absolutely right in prescribing tummy time, but they often don't give the way to do it. Mm -hmm. So I got really fascinated by it as a body worker. 
And I learned about a woman named Michelle Emanuel, who is a pediatric occupational therapist. And she's also a craniosacral therapist like I am. So I, um, you know, I heard a bunch of IBCLCs and breastfeeding support people and other people, <coughs> excuse me, who were talking about this method. And I took the class and I was absolutely smitten by it. Michelle is a genius. And she has developed a method to help babies and parents really begin to love and appreciate and get into the benefits of tummy time. So she did develop the tummy time method. And so while I'm not going to get into the whole method, which involves a bunch of different positions for baby, not just tummy, but positions that actually help baby with inner ear development, with sensory input, with integrating their reflexes. But I can focus on the tummy aspect because that's kind of what everybody is very curious about. So if you kind of want me to jump into the methodology for a minute, just to kind of show you, I, I will do that. So very often, one of the barriers to doing tummy time is that, you know, new parents are really overwhelmed, right? There's they got so much going on. So very often they're like, well, I have nowhere to do it. And it might sound like a small thing, but I know what it's like to be a mom with a bunch of little kids and really literally not knowing what's happening in a day. And like, all you're doing is stuffing toast into your mouth all day for nourishment, right? So Thinking about these little things can be huge, but if you can just take a place in your house that's warm and putting a blanket down on the floor and having a couple of toys and you just keep it there all the time, that can be your dedicated tummy time place. And just doing that kind of makes you feel like, ah. Oh. So every time you kind of walk by it and see it, you'll be more tempted to put your baby yeah. down on the floor. So it's just as easy is doing that. So you want to do put your baby on their tummy when they are, you know, happy and awake. So they have a fresh diaper and they're feeling pretty good. It's not the greatest time to do it when they're really hungry or when they're really, really full. So it's kind of like that Goldilocks just right yeah. moment, right? So here we have our our tummy time blanket. All right. So we take our baby. I haven't found good clothes for this baby, so I apologize. They're naked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my, my demonstration baby also is naked. <laughs> Yay, nakedness. Let's be bo body positive, right? So very often, people will just kind of put the baby on their tummy, and baby will cry, and then parents will say, you know, they hate it. It makes sense. So the first thing that you want to do to support your baby is to get your baby regulated. So what does that mean? That means that your body is so powerful as a parent that it has the ability to calm your baby and prepare them for their daily exercise. Samantha, I can't see you. I just want to make sure you're still there. I'm still there. I just put you full screen so that they could see what okay. you're doing. Thanks. I was like, I don't want to be talking to air. Yeah. So what we do to start is we plug baby in to our hearts. And we take a deep breath in. And we take a deep breath out. And as you do that and your shoulders begin to sink, and your breath begins to get longer, your baby's nervous system begins to calm. You are that powerful in helping your baby to calm. And you know what it's like when your baby is cranky and then it starts to make you anxious and then everybody is crying. That's often because our own nervous systems get overwhelmed. And Babies are in a state of what's called biosymbiosis. So that means they totally vibe off you all the time. And there's no better energy barometer in the world than a baby. So the first task of tummy time is to first calm baby by calming you. And so babies really love to be attached and close. That's their favorite place in the world. So we take that deep breath 
And when baby is happy, we can have a little look at baby and we wanna to start to get their facial muscles going. We want to begin to activate the social engagement nervous system. So you can look at baby and go, hello, how are you? Look in their eyes. And once their little face muscles start working and they're happy, that means they're ready for tummy time. So you can then take your little baby and place them on their tummy and you can put their hand under them. So now obviously if you have a little baby, their bums are gonna be up in the air and their heads are going to be down on the ground. But as they grow, you're going to be starting to see baby extend their body. By 16 weeks or so, baby is gonna be up in extension like that. So it is a process and we're really wanting to facilitate optimal extension by 16 weeks with baby. So you have your baby like this, obviously their face is not buried <laughs> in the floor. And this is kind of where babies start to get a little bit upset. They're on their tummy, they're not sure what's going on. And for babies who have particularly oral tethers, so maybe they've had a phrenotomy or they need one, or they are having feeding challenges and digestive issues, or even sensory processing stuff. These are the babies that are going to have the hardest time with it, but they are also the babies who really, really need it the most. Okay, so I wanna emphasize on that. Just because your baby's upset doesn't mean you should scrap tummy time. It's better to do tiny little frequent bouts of tummy time while your baby is happy than long periods while your baby is upset. And the reason for that is we want babies to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Our tummy time play with our baby is another way that we learn to co-regulate with our baby. So co-regulate means, again, using your body, your voice, your mind to be that container of calm for your baby. And so your baby really needs your focused attention for this. So once baby is on their tummy, you are going to kind of get into the baby's face <laughs> a little bit. And you're going to encourage them. So baby being on their tummy, it's there's a lot of pressure there. So it activates their sympathetic nervous system. So very often we associate the sympathetic nervous system with being scared or fighting or fleeing, but that's not all that it does. If we are socially engaged with someone we really like and your baby really, really likes you, we can actually be in a sympathetic nervous system response without being afraid, okay? And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that tummy down without being afraid or too uncomfortable. So the thing that baby likes the most is their parent's face. So you know what it's like if you're working out and you're starting to hit the ball and you're really hating it? What's a better way to soothe your nervous system to keep you going than playing good music or talking with a friend? So this is the same concept. So you wanna get down in front of your baby and encourage them. So you can go, hey baby, and baby will be shifting and wiggling a lot because that's what they do to find their balance and that's great. And sometimes they're gonna put their head down because they're tired and other times they're gonna look up and they're gonna make lots of noises like eh, 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 eh. They're gonna do like this Valsalva breathing because they're on their tummy and that's great. So what you are looking for as a parent is that little moment where baby's excitement starts to turn into unhappy, okay? That's the moment that you catch your baby. Tummy time is a no cry zone because mm -hmm. if baby starts to be left crying and fussing just for the sake of leaving them there for as much time as the pediatrician says, which is totally logical that you would do that because your doctor said so, um, it's, it's going to start to train the baby to actually really not like tummy time. So tummy time really with being upset they're gonna associate it with being upset and uncomfortable. So you're actually training your baby to like it, just like we shape sleep by helping babies to like their sleep area, right? And to have really positive sleep cues. We're also sort of shaping them to enjoy the exercise they're having. So that means creating a lot of safety around that. So baby will be playing and looking around and you can do things to help create 
head movement by kind of coming to the side of the baby and going, hello, call your baby's name. And they will lift their head to one side and then they can turn their head to the other side. And this helps to release torticollis and all kinds of stuff. So you are your baby's favorite toy, especially up till, you know, about eight to 12 weeks, something like that. They prefer shiny eyes than toys. Um, but you know, some babies are advanced and they really do like toys. So toys that have light, babies have light reflexes. They love light. So you can have lights. They like those um, scrunchy toys that make cool sounds that they can put in their mouth and things like that. So all of the opportunities for baby to really use their ability to move. And so once baby starts going, eh, 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 now tummy time is done. So you take your baby and you plug him back in and you're like, well done. You did so well. Wonderful. And you take a breath to calm them. And, you know, maybe they'll need a little bit of pacifier or breast or a bottle at this point just to soothe them. That's fine. And then when they're happy, you're going to do it again. Okay. So you, we're going to aim to do little bits of tummy time about three to five times in a row. And then you want to do that about three to five times per day. So you're just getting little micro doses of tummy time, even if it's two seconds of your baby being, you know, happy. And we just keep babies there until they're happy. And what you're going to see is gradually they're going to get into it more because you're there. You're right with them and they have their dedicated place. Yeah. So to ensure that tummy time is successful, we want baby's hands to be free. Okay. We want them on the floor because they really feel electromagnetic energy. They feel the earth. We want to let the mother earth hold them when we're not holding them a lot of the time. And their hands are like Wi-Fi. <laughs> so we want them to be able to have their wrists and their hands exposed and to touch the earth. And if you can get the room warm enough, honestly, do naked tummy time sometimes if you can't, because baby's skin is drenched in sensory receptors. And these sensory receptors uh, are often not activated enough with babies who live in North American cold climates. It's not any fault of the parents. It's just because it's cold. Right? Yeah. <laughs> It's cold. I don't want to be naked right now. <laughs> so you have to like have a heater or something blasting on the baby. And you can touch them, you know, touching them is really helpful. And a good thing to do is we you can do what Michelle calls a hiney helper. You can just press on their bum a little bit and that helps them extend a little bit more. All right. And then you just pick baby up and calm them. It's as simple as that. So what's really great about the tummy time method is that it takes babies through a series of different positions that's not only affecting the ventral weight bearing, um, but also like helping with things. So as a tummy time instructor, I look at asymmetries in babies. I look at head turning preferences. I look at like the head shapes. I look at where they're bearing their weight in different parts of their body. And I can give tips and tricks to help it. So the cool thing is that I never have to be hands on with a baby. This is all parent driven. So you, you know, once you get the information and the consultation and the information, then you just go off and you do it yourself. Absolutely. That's, yeah. And, and one thing, you know, at, at Be Baby, we offer a full 12 month program. And within that program, we have breastfeeding, we have childbirth, we have um, sleep training, obviously, mm -hmm. sleep education and, and healthcare professionals. But uh, one of the things that I always warn people about is birth can sometimes cause a lot of tensions and issues with babies. And it's not like a three day thing. It can actually prolong because again, they're not moving a lot. So we tend to work out some of our tensions just because we're so active or we'll get under the shower and just stretch what feels like it needs to be stretched, but babies won't do that. And so sometimes I start working with a mother um, and she's having breastfeeding issues or perhaps she's having sleep issues and I'll identify, I feel, 
like it's always a feeling, right? I feel like perhaps there's an issue here with tension, or maybe there was a little bit of neck trauma, or um, maybe it was just psychological trauma, right? As they were coming out, maybe it was a little bit aggressive and, and or too fast. And so they're just, they're feeling uncomfortable, right? And so we work often, we have an osteopath within a baby that we work with that will send babies too. But now we also have a link for a belly time instructor. So sometimes when, you know, we've done the osteopathy sessions and that has, you know, helped dramatically. However, there's like, just tensions that keep coming back and we're not understanding why they keep mm -hmm. coming back because they, the cause has been resolved. Well, then this is when this would be super useful because this is a way to prevent it from happening again and again, right? Mm -hmm. and finding out what their sensitive points are and so why that's happening to them in particular and what you yeah. can do as a mom or as a dad empowered yourself yes. in facilitating your baby to have you know smooth muscles because a baby who is under a lot of tension is not going to sleep very well they're not going to feed very well and they're just generally not going to be feeling at ease during the day because they're so you know uncomfortable we've all woken up one morning with like that bottom of the head heading you have like that tension at the top of your back and you're like okay what can i do to get it away and you take tylenol and it just never works um especially in pregnancy so unfortunately time doesn't work when you're pregnant but one of my things that I really love to do, especially in the summer, if you're having a baby in the summer, is I like to take a thin blanket and lay it over um, the grass outside. Mm -hmm. So as they press down, first of all, they're getting all that lovely, you know, natural air outside. But as they press down through the blanket, it's sort of like this three level different textures that they're feeling, right? And they just love yeah. that. And whether I'm doing it inside or outside, I'll lay on my side like this, right? And, and twirl myself around the baby so they see my face. And then when they start being a little bit more active and they're able to really turn their heads, well, then you can move to one side and move to the other. They sell these little play mats, I guess, with sides, you know, with toys for, for babies. And I hate those because all the toys are at, at the top, right? At the top, yeah. Right. So parents will put their babies on their backs because for them to actually play with the toys. So I've actually cut all of mine off yeah. and I line the side and I open all the sides so that the baby is more, you know, willing to go side to side. And a trick that I've noticed personally for my babies that had a little bit of trouble with belly time, I use a mirror. The mirror is the number one thing, actually, that uh, my teacher, Michelle, recommends. Okay. Baby, babies love other babies. And if you don't have other babies around, they look at themselves and they don't know it's them. Yes. <laughs> <Right? laughs> they don't know that they're looking at themselves. They're just like, look at that awesome, beautiful kid over there. So <laughs> mirrors are a fantastic way to stimulate your baby to stay in tummy time longer. Same with some cool toys as your baby gets a little bit older. And Samantha, like you hit the nail right on the head with the fact that birth is, and, and pregnancy. So it, it goes back farther than that because even in pregnancy, the way that our culture is set up is that our evolutionary bodies are often not, yeah, so babies are already all crunched up and squished in there. And because everything in our birthing bodies tends to want to go forward leaning, you know, and squatting in modern obstetrics and in normal life, our pelvises do the opposite. We go backwards. Yeah. And having a having to push a baby out on your back and uphill, not just hard on you, it's hard on baby. Yeah. So this puts a lot of pressure on them. And then once they come out, they usually come right on here, but very often staff will put the baby like face up for the longest time. That A, does not help them drain their fluids and B, creates a startle reflex in a newborn. You all know what it's like when you put your baby down and they go <gasps> like that. Imagine coming into the world and you're getting suctioned right away. You're just startling. That can be a little bit traumatic. So honestly, like I recommend all of my pregnant clients to have their baby, like insist their baby come 
tummy to tummy, skin to skin as soon as possible once the birth giver is ready to receive the baby because we are all allowed to do that in our own time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So baby will be like this. This is baby's first tummy time. And I cannot tell you how critical this golden hour after birth is because babies are designed to utilize their innate reflexes to find the breast. So they kick and they crawl and they push and then they come to the breast. That is an incredibly important part of the nervous system response that babies need to be doing. But obviously, as many of you have given birth know that that's there's very little time to facilitate mm -hmm. that the rules of the hospital like we want that baby on the breast like within 30 minutes to an hour whereas most babies it can take according to nature like more than an hour to crawl to the breast which is normal so we're pushing them a bit too fast so don't despair because if you know we don't need everything to be perfect at the beginning, we don't need that. Babies are incredibly resilient. So even if you had like not the birth you wanted, didn't have all that, don't despair, all right? We can, there's very little that cannot be healed by having baby tummy to tummy, skin to skin for as much as possible. So the gold standard for tummy time for the first, I would say two to three weeks of a baby's life is not on the floor. It's on mom or dad. Mom, parent, or whoever the caregiver is. And, you know, you can rest assured that a minimum of 90 minutes per day spent in connected naps is really important for brain development. And it's really important for security. Not all the time. They can totally sleep in their little swaddle sack. We can totally start getting them happy into their space right at the beginning. Yeah. Especially wrong with that. the swaddle to try and imitate, you know, that the inside of the womb, which is just so comforting. Yeah. The other thing I tell uh, parents all the time is when you go home, one of the reasons I say limit visitors and have them on planned visits because Personally, for me and my husband, whenever we have a baby, basically we don't wear shirts <laughs> for the first few weeks. And if my baby isn't naked, you know, belly to belly with me, it's because he's naked belly to belly with my husband on his chest. And uh, many of us know that the woman's body temperature will regulate. Yep to the heat that the baby needs, right? So if your baby's getting a little bit cold, your body will heat up to transmit a little bit more heat to the baby. And but if you have twins with different temperatures, it does it with each side of your chest, exactly. each twin. Ah, that's and biosymbiosis. That, that's pretty cool. And the other thing that people don't know is dad's body. Okay, so whether there's two dads or just one dad, dad's bodies will do the same thing. So if you put a baby on on your husband's chest, okay, or if you're uh, uh, two, two men or two dads that have had a baby, do that belly time because your body is immensely wise and will adapt your temperature as well to the temperature of your baby. And it's just that wonderful bonding time. So especially in today's society, we have actually done um, tests to sort of notice the biological difference with dads today versus, you know, 30 years ago. And we've noticed that with their increased involvement in early parenthood and, and, and going forward, their uh, hormonal makeup yep. has actually changed and their genetic makeup is changing. And so their bodies are way, way, way more responsive to baby's needs than they were perhaps 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yes. So, when I, you know, last baby I had at home, um, maybe two, three hours later, we, we burned the, plus, the, the, the cord and I wanted to go take a quick shower before going to bed while well, my husband laid down mm -hmm. with a naked baby on him um, and, and just relaxed with the baby. One thing I will warn you that has happened to my husband, unfortunately, is we don't tend to put diapers for, for a little bit for yeah. some time after giving birth. We're not in the habit of, of putting diapers right away. He well, did so have meconium all over himself that one time. So we have learned to have you know, hot compresses and, and, and um, wipes available because that stuff is a sticky. And when you're doing belly time, 
it helps with the digestive system, right? It gets everything moving and that can happen (laughs) as well. Um, Thank you so much, Leslie, for for coming in with me today and to talk about this important subject that is belly time and to sort of remove some of that pressure, right? Where people are told your baby has to do 20 minutes of belly time, but after two minutes they're crying and then they're... They, they don't know what to do. They let their baby cry because that's what they were told to, or they stop, but then they don't want to try it again because they're like, well, this isn't working. So just go a few minutes at a time, whatever your baby is willing to take and very slowly and surely it will, you know, start to increase. Um, I love doing belly time after a warm bath, mm. take a bath with my baby. And then after mm. I'll lay him completely butt naked, you know, on a blanket or a towel. Yeah. And I'll lay beside them. I find they tend to be a little bit more calm, right? And a little bit more receptive to it. That so that's a, a great way to do it. And if you're using those play mats, take all those toys off the top and put them. Take the bar things off entirely because you can't get in with them to roll them and do stuff like that adequately. And they have enough time on their backs, frankly. Really do, for yeah. a baby to develop volitional movement, they really need to be tummy down. So they have startle reflex on their back, but it's really being tummy down that stretches out all of the strain that helps them to lift and turn their neck. Because here's the thing, like you can give all of the, and Samantha, you probably noticed this, you can give all of the sleep shaping advice in the world and breastfeeding hacks. But if a baby has like oral tethers or they have constraints, especially around the midline, that little body is going to grow around the tension. And those practices that the information that we offer won't land on all babies. I have so many clients who are like, my baby will only go to sleep when they're moving. I have tips for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. To we got to get into their vestibular system. There might be a lack of sensory input into that. So just the information about sleep doesn't land the same on every baby. We really have to take into account body issues. Yeah. And we can see that through their expression. So how they move their little heads and all of that sort of stuff. So having like a multi integrative approach to these issues that really concern modern parents is so important. We want all of this to be released. So actually, Michelle, my teacher, specifically created the tummy time method for tongue tied babies. Okay. Doing the whole tummy time method sequence actually is an amazing preparation to do before latching a baby on who is really struggling. Yes, definitely. And I think, you know, uh, sometimes people are surprised because when they enter a peace of mind parenting program, of course, we offer sleep help, but we offer breastfeeding consulting. We offer some, you know, body movement exercises as well. We have modules on that. We talk about your nutrition. We talk about baby's Mm -hmm. nutrition. We talk about the environment for sleep, but also for daytime and your relationship with your husband or or your partner, as well as your relationship with the baby, the home situation. Like we really break down absolutely everything because um, I do not like treating sleep issues in a vacuum. And I do not like treating breastfeeding issues in a vacuum either. I like to bring everything together. It's like that holistic view where we're taking the whole person, their whole immediate environment, and then everything that's also happening in their life that may be impacting it, right? We all know that if you're stressed out, your baby tends to be stressed out. And so that can cause sleep issues and feed issues and all of these things. So we're very pro taking that whole approach together, but also that multidisciplinary team, right? We have you that we refer to, we have osteopaths, we have doctors, we have midwives, we have, you know, this whole huge team that we work with, because what I really dislike in sort of this world that we're in is when, you know, Uh, different professionals are just like, well, no, I'm the expert on all of this and I'm going to fix all these issues. And (laughs) And so they never talk to each other. They never help each other out. And then mom's in the middle and she has like a breastfeeding consultant harping one thing and the sleep consultant is harping something else. And the doula is like, wait a minute, I'm not okay with this. And the doctor is going through that checklist of developmental milestones is, is your baby clapping yet? And mom's like, 
I am failing at like everything, right? And she's stuck in the middle and it's just not a good environment to begin your motherhood journey. So for us, like I'm always adding new people to our network and, and bringing them on to do these these modules with us and uh, referring out as well, because it's just so important that as mothers, you know, we're just like you come in and we go like, <laughs> right. So now we're, we're encouraging baby and we're holding that safe place for baby. Mothers and fathers, lalas and zozos need a community in which they are regulated. Mm -hmm. And if the professionals are all like Row! at each other, then we're not doing our job. No. Our prime directive yeah. is to hold the family in a regulated state. And that means everybody needs to be chill. We need to have some trust in each other's expertise and open and willing to share and all of that sort of stuff because everyone has their brilliance. Yeah. Know? My first question whenever I'm interviewing a doula is um, how do you hold space? And whenever she looks at me and she's like, uh, I'm like, not, you're not the right doula for us. Like that's not you need to know what holding space is and you need to have your just like your your understanding of it. Because for me, everything in motherhood is, you know, in pregnancy and in childbirth, but also in those first few years and beyond is you need somebody there to hold your space. So much. So it's much. So important. Create the container safety, that loving environment where no matter what is going on, you don't get stressed about it because you can reach out and you will always get the help that you need. Right. So I'm very happy that um, we know, well, we have links with, with, with you, obviously with mother, with doula. If you want to maybe tell everyone if they're looking for doula or if they are looking for some to learn more about the, the belly, um, the tummy type method, yeah. um, how do they actually uh, get into contact with you? What's the best way? The best way is to email me info at motherwit.ca. I don't actually have my tummy time stuff up on the website yet <laughs> because I'm so busy, <laughs> but um, you can always uh, message me there um, if you want. You can also go to motherwit doula care on Facebook and message there if you prefer. <laughs> And if anything, just drop in the comments as well, and we will put you into contact. I have put the email as well um, in the contact so that people awesome. can go to. And you're in our reference list, so you're that somebody needs honored. <laughs> yeah, that so we can start conversations whenever needed. Well, thank you so much, and I look forward to doing this with you again. Yay! Thanks so much for inviting me. Bye, moms. <laughs> bye. -bye. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Bye. Hey, get some clothes on these babies. <laughs> I know, I know, but you know, I've tried putting my baby's clothes on him, but he's so darn skinny. <laughs> I have one just like that. Her name is Sophia and she's 15. Oh, well, this is easy. And he's very, he's like a year old. <laughs> What's his name? Fiji. <laughs> Fiji. Named by one of your children, no doubt. <laughs> no, my mother. Oh. <laughs> But I will let her know that. <laughs> well, have a great day. Thanks, Samantha. Take care. Bye.